Hello, hello guys. Happy Sunday. Hi Lucy and Elizabeth and Janie and Chris and Sue and Cindy and Carol and Monty and Beverly. Hi Kay and Cindy Paints over on YouTube. So we are streaming on my Sandy McTeer Designs page and also on my YouTube channel. And let's just hope and pray that we have <laughs> the technology that we need today to get through this <laughs> live. So I've seen lots of interruptions this week and um, yeah. So anyway, hope you guys had a fantastic week. <sighs> if you follow me, you know that I was at the beach, my happy place, my go-to rejuvenate, re-energize, reinvigorate. Um, and it's also our annual anniversary trip. So I just celebrated 32 years of a wedded bliss with my hubby. Um, I just looked at the microphone to make sure that we are on. So, <clears throat> oh, Bonnie, I cannot wait to see you at, o at OKC. I am prepping and getting ready. It's going to be fun. So, oh, well, Crystal Hendricks, thank you so much. I'm glad you're here. All right, guys. And Lynn from up in Albert, or Saint, is it St. Albert? I'm from Edmonton. Hello, hello. Hi, Brenda, and Verdi, and Melinda. So good to see you guys on. All right. Oh my goodness, I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. And right before I went live, I um, had like a, where's my water? <laughs> Let me get it. Um, <clears throat> how can you miss it, right? <laughs> but I am at, am I going the right way? No, I am right where I need to be. <laughs> So, just to get this water down, I didn't take it to the beach with me, and let me just say, I probably didn't have 64 ounces of water each day. Um, I tried, but <clears throat> I did, Sharita, I had a fantastic time at the beach. I always love going um, to St. Simons, and so it's an island off of Georgia, down around Savannah, Jekyll Island, um, Anyway, it's part of the Golden Isles, and it's just a beautiful place to go. We go there every year. Um, we might look for a different place to stay, only because over the last, um, I want to say maybe three, four years with the hurricanes that have come through, it's it's shifted the beach. So the access that we have, you walk a little bit further to get out. <laughs> And I don't know about y'all, my beach people out there, but I want to walk out the door, take about 20 steps, and sit by the water. So, call me spoiled. But anyway, it was it was beautiful, and we had a great time, and we love going there because there's so many fantastic restaurants um, on St. Simon's. So, But next year, we're thinking maybe I'll go to St. Simon's by myself, and then um, just a little work trip. Um, to re-energize and stuff. But then our anniversary trip, I think we will do somewhere else. We're thinking maybe St. Augustine Way. So we'll see. Um, but I do love the Gulf. I was finally able to catch you live. Hi, Vera. Hi, Nancy. So good to see you guys on. Hi, Virginia. I love that water bottle too, don't you? Yes, it keeps me on track. <laughs> because normally I would drink, you know, I'm kind of a water snob. Um, and oh my gosh, I feel so sorry for the people in Mississippi. Um, I like Dasani water. Um, we are we live in the country, so we're on a well, and my well water is good. But I don't like cold water, um, which is so random and weird that we're talking about this. But this cup keeps me on track because it tells me, you know, at 8 o'clock, if I've only halfway through my bottle, I've got to pound some water, which at 8 o'clock I'm not going to do. Because <laughs> then I'll have another problem and I'll be up all night. So, our beaches are being swallowed by the seas. Houses, too, very sadly, sign. No, I know, I know. Um, yes, the shift that we have definitely seen in the last, you can tell I've been painting and prepping for convention. Um, the beach front just isn't what it used to be. Now, once you get there, it's fine. It's just the trek to get there. And if it's rained in between and you go through puddles of water. If you've never been to Georgia, the state bird is the mosquito. I say that with all the sarcasm. 
um, but you will get eaten alive. So we spray down with, with uh, mosquito spray before we get to the beach and then spray down with our sunscreen. So anyway, my nose is already peeling. So you're probably gonna see, <laughs> I need one of those cups. I hate drinking water. So Lucy, let me tell you a couple things. If you hate drinking water, let me just tell you. I, I will put cucumber slices, very thinly sliced. That makes your water taste different. A little squeeze of lemon juice or lime juice um, is amazing as well to be able to get that water down. Um, I find that any kind of artificial water, you know, like, um, like ice or any of those other flavored waters, um, if I drink too many of them, I get a headache. So I try and do 64 ounces of water every day and cucumber, lemon, or lime because I like citrus. So, but it does help getting it down. Hi, Faye. Hi, Janice. Oh, I forgot. So I wrote down <clears throat> Turks and Caicos beaches. Sharita, my son just came back from Turks and Caicos a couple of, um, maybe a month or so ago. Absolutely loved it. And the flight over from Atlanta is only like three hours. Hello, I'm in. <laughs> um, hi, Marlene. So, and Liz, so on YouTube, Monty Dersham, you were the first to comment. And on Facebook, Lucy, Matt, you were the first to comment. So private message me and let me know what e-packet you would like. And I'll get that sent off to you after the live. Okay. So where would I find the water bottle? The water bottle crystal I got um, at Amazon, on Amazon. So if you just put in, um, I don't know what I put in. Let me see. <clears throat> if it says anything it already has paint on it which I mean everything in my house has paint on it um, let me just say it's BPA free and it's recyclable and if you just put in daily water bottle <laughs> on Amazon I'm sure it will pop up so and I need to leave the lid open um, but again it's a great way to know if you've had your water for the day. And so we have no, we have no CMs. Carol, no CMs, not a fan. Every time I get bitten up, I have sores that will not close for anything. Um, they're horrible. So, but I do want to come to Sanibel Island. So, um, hi, Melissa. All right, guys, you ready to get started? I love, love, love what we're doing today. I'm not gonna do the whole, um, all three lessons. So, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about and you're just here by chance, welcome. <laughs> um, so my new um, little collection, and there will be more to this. This is the first three, um, is the grateful, thankful, and blessed. So what I'm gonna show you today um, are some elements how I did the background, which is super cool because you could do that background on anything. And then um, how to do the border. And we're going to paint this one today. And then next Sunday, we're going to paint the other two, okay? Because in order for us to get the background done and to do, um, do it justice, I would be blazing through all three of those. Um, and so we're going to do the background, the border, and then the design. And you can find the, um, let me get my glasses up, <laughs> the surface that I used for this one, I got from the amazing, um, not only talented in her painting, but in her woodworking skills, everything I've gotten from her, exceptional, exceptional quality. I know she takes... Um, her job, her business to heart. And when she packs something up, she packs it with so much love that the person getting it, I think when you get the package, you feel it. I mean, that's just Sheila in a nutshell. I've never met in person. Cannot wait to meet in person, but absolutely love and adore. We talk um, on the phone, but um, anyway, so if you've not ordered anything from Sheila, I highly recommend um, that you look at her website, all right? And the surface that I use, let me pull this up because those are the surfaces, the three um, flat cut banner ornaments. The ones I bought were in a kit 
and that's the item number, but you can order additional, and I'm gonna show you why you need to order additional, okay? The other thing I used was the uh, Papillon, um, the stamp, uh, Stampers Anonymous stamp. It's a Tim Holtz stamp, which I love. I have that on my website. And there's a discount code if you're ordering on my website. Don't forget, even if you're ordering this e-packet for this lesson, it's ART. And then I have a one-time 20% discount code at DecoArt. So if you're ordering anything from DecoArt, DecoArt.com, you can use that discount code and it will get you 20% off. All right? Sheila is amazing. Hello, Vera. So are you. And I miss seeing you. It's been forever. Forever. So hi, Fran. Okay, guys, you ready to get started? So far, it's looking pretty good. I don't want to jinx it, but... All right, let me move some things out of the way. We're going to take care of our giveaways from last week. Not last week. Last week, I was heading to the beach. The week before that, we did... Do I have it handy? Can you see it? <laughs> My autumn um, t stack teacups. Christmas is in the works. Not sure if it's going to be in September or October. Um, because in eight days, I'm going to Turkey for a vacay. Cannot wait. Um, and of course, I will share as much as I can with you guys So while I'm there. Um, all right, let's scroll right down to here and take care of these giveaways. So, two weeks ago, right, we had um, a giveaway, and it was for three M squared stencils. If you're not familiar with M squared, it's Moreau McTeer. And I have a stencil line, I'm going to look for hers, um, with Tracy Moreau, and so... When you want to order them, you can order them from tracymoreau.net or you can order them from my website. Okay, we both carry them. So the winner of those stencils is Deb Miller. Deb Miller. Message me your mailing address and I will get those shipped off to you after the holiday. And then we had two Stampendous. Now, I think this is worthy of me coming back up <laughs> and saying how incredibly sad, gut-wrenched sad I am to hear that Stampendous, after 40 fabulous years of sharing um, stamps with the world, won't be any longer. So if you're looking for stamps, you can find them on my website, you can find them on Tracy Moreau's website. You can find them on Deb Antonick's website. In fact, I think she has a sale going on. Let me see. Right there. So paintingwithdeb.ca or .com, whichever. She's in Canada, but shipping from Canada to the States is nothing. Shipping from here to Canada, a different story. <laughs> but anyway, so... If you have a favorite Stampenda stamp and you want to get an extra, make sure to shop now because I believe at the end of the month, they're not shipping anything new. So, which is very sad, sad. So when it comes to stamps and creating with stamps, guys, think of it like a line drawing that you don't have to sit there and transfer. Um, like this one. That basically is a line drawing for you that you can put on with paint or ink. You can use it in mixed media, your decorative painting. There's so many things you can use stamps on. It's not just for card making um, or for crafts. I mean, it really does add so much interest to our painted designs and pieces these days. And it's an investment and you've got to take care of them. So they might seem a little pricey up front, but guess what? They're going to last, right? It's not like one done and you throw it away, it's it's going to last. So, all right, let me come back down here. <laughs> so I know I was devastated. <clears throat> okay, so the winner of these two Stampendous stamps is Angie Hilton. Angie Hilton. So when I put all the names in from Facebook and um, YouTube on the wheel, I will write down where, so Angie Hilton, I know you joined us from YouTube. Um, so message me 
either through my website, you can go to my website and hit the contact button and I will um, get those to you, all right? Don't put your mailing address online. All righty, and then the brushes. We had an encaustic one inch oval, a half inch oval. Um, I love the IPC, I'm gonna turn that over, the IPC uh, soft flat mop, which I'm gonna use today. And then there's the IPC Small Point Blend. And so the winner of that giveaway is Patty Souls. So Patty, message me and let me know your mailing address and I will get these off to you on Tuesday. All right? So, oh, I hope it's not freezing. Nope, I shouldn't have said anything, huh? I haven't seen anything on my end. So if it's glitching, I'm gonna keep going, all right? Okay, let's do some giveaways for this week. So, again, oops, I dropped one. <clears throat> so I have, ooh, let me bend over and get that. That was a long way down. So I have two stamps uh, for one winner. So this is the Stampers Anonymous, Tim Holtz. I figured with the holidays coming up, I would um, pull from my giveaway stash some holiday things. So we have Cozy Christmas, and then I love this one too. It's the Kling Snow Swirl Stampendous. So one winner for those. And, and then again, some M Square stencils, the pearl pattern, so like knit pearl um, stencil, the buffalo check stencil, and then like a checkered board stencil. So another winner for those. And of course, can't have a giveaway without having some of my favorite brushes. Um, Dynasty Black Gold, so we've got a 20, which I would say is comparable to like a three quarter flat, a 14, and a round, and that's a six round. Four and six round are my favorites. So, another winner for those. I'm not gonna throw those down. I'm just gonna put those right over there. <laughs> okay. So let's, hi, Carolyn, hi, Julie, hi, Molly Ann, hi, Tammy and Sharita. All right, so what I'm using today, I'm using um, this Papillon stamp. Um, it's a Tim Holtz stamp, got butterflies, some words, places, and then, but I used this because I wanted something big enough to cover and fit the whole surface, um, and it was perfect, and again, I love these stamps because they come on this plastic sheet. I mean, it's sturdy and it's got three hole punches if you want to put it into a binder. Um, and so here's a little trick because sometimes I can't get it to stick back on, but if you use some spit <laughs> or a little bit of water, it will stick back onto your, your card, all right? So we're gonna use that. And then, like I said, this is the um, the three flat uh, cut banner ornaments that I'm using today from Sheila Landry. And so let me just pop that up again, her website. Again, exceptional quality. They came perfect, ready to paint on. And um, yeah, and I've had them. And when I woke up and thought of this idea, I thought I have to get these painted on this piece. Um, and it worked perfectly. So I love it when that happens. So we have the grateful, thankful, and blessed. Now, what I did was I, um, and Sheila is very sweet and included some extras for me. So what I did was I went ahead and I did the background. Um, and if you saw the, the picture um, that I put up online, it was of the these laid out like a banner. I already have this one taped off because I want to show you how I did the border. But to break it up a little bit, to break up the painted things, I did the same background. I left it a little bit darker and I did a different border. I just did a little bit of brown and I'll show you how I did that. All right. So, but what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to do the background, how to do the border, and how to do grateful. And then next week, we'll tackle those two, okay? Because then I don't have to do the background. I don't have to do the border. Everything's going to be done and ready, all right? So let's get started. I will try and look at the comments. However, since it's just me, 
sometimes it's like squirrel and then I get off on a tangent and answer a question and I forget what I was talking about. <laughs> so, um, hi Mary from Ohio and Mary Ann from Wisconsin. So hi Isabel and Janie and Barb. All right, let me grab, um, when you run out of Stampenda stamps, do you plan to carry? Um, so yes, Carrie, I am bringing in some more goodies and um, Tim Holtz stamps, absolutely. And let me show you one more thing I'm thinking about. And you guys let me know in the comment if you think I should. Because I'm thinking about bringing in some of these. I mean, I've already ordered some. <laughs> um, but let me know in the comments if you've used these and if you have, um, are Tim Holtz stencils different than stamps? So Janice Reed, yes. Tim Holtz um, has stamps and stencils with Ranger, Stampers Anonymous, um, Tonic Studios, oh my gosh, Sizzix. He's got a line with just about every major company. Um, and so I'm thinking about bringing in these and maybe doing some lives on how to use them. So leave in the comments and let me know, is this something that you would love to learn how to use? Um, because you can incorporate these with paint as well. So I'm seriously thinking about that and have a really cool, fun thing to share with my membership group on Tuesday for our first lesson in September. Um, Okay, so the other thing <clears throat> are these little brushes I'm thinking about also carrying. Look at that. And they're specifically made for the ink because I can see the ink on my thumb. It doesn't dry out. Thank you, Linda Dristas, for reminding me <laughs> I needed to pull my brushes out. Um, but anyway... So you could use that as a makeup brush. It's so soft. So anyway, okay, let's get started. So I'm going to get a baby wipe first because I will <laughs> get that everywhere. See, there's ink still on that, but I don't need to wash it. It's still very, very soft. Okay, so the surface is going to come like this. Already sanded, already perfect. Let's zoom in just a touch. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> I have to sweet talk it. It's not been used for a week. Okay. <clears throat> and then I base coated it with the, um, the new color. It's a 2022 color. Um, I always write on the bottom the year it comes out. So anyway, Almondine is a new 2022 color. You can get that at decoart.com. You can get it from CD Wood. Dot com. You can get it from, from uh, let me see if I have her link. You can get it from MaureenBaker.com. She's got a dash between her name. Um, and then let's come up here. You can always get it from DecoArt, right? Um, and there's the other one, CDWood.com. The plaque, don't worry about the plaque. <laughs> That's for the... Um, that is for our stacked teacups. I just haven't taken that off yet. Okay, so surface, I base coated it with, first, you, it's not necessary always, but it's a good practice to get into. Um, I base coated it with some multi-purpose sealer, just so that none of the wood grain or anything would come up. Then I base coated it with Almondine. If you don't have this, it's like, um, Oh, like a light buttermilk or buttermilk. I would say buttermilk more than light buttermilk, okay? Um, or antique white. Now, from here, <clears throat> we are going to do the background. Let me just move some things. Hello, Deb Antonick. I was just telling everybody you've got a sale going on. Okay, so I want to get out some asphaltum, which I have on my website. Always a good idea, remember guys, take those little things off. I know people that save them in a jar and make necklaces out of them, but your jar, your um, lid to your paint will close better and last longer if you get that off there. All right, let's open the trash can. 
Okay, and then a foam brush. Now, you could use a makeup sponge or wedge. Um, Dynasty has a large oval foam brush. Let's get on camera, Sandy. And so you could use the foam brush. I ruined mine because I scrubbed it on the bottom of my water basin. Not good. So, or you can use these cheap old things, which I'm not a big fan of, but for something like this, I am, okay? So what we're gonna do is turn this stamp over, load up our little sponge brush, tap it on, work that in. Um, Helen, the Tim Holtz, uh, the distressed oxides are not, but you can use a workable fixative spray or a matte spray over them. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna tap that right over the sponge. You wanna work a little quick because of course um, we want the paint to stay wet. You can also spritz it with a little water, but it bleeds, so you'll get a little watercolor effect. So I'm just going to tap that on. Okay, now I want this to be, so I'm gonna put that straight. I'm gonna hold this on each corner and get it as straight as possible. Lay it down, press it in place. Let's put that in the water basin. Okay, now I have a little white spot right there, so I'm just gonna stamp that. Not that it's necessary, because I've got a border there, right? But now you wanna get that paint off. You don't want that paint to stick in. So I have a water basin here. I'm gonna slide it right into that water basin, give it a little bath. Don't let it sit too long. Um, if you have dried paint, you can use a little hand sanitizer, a little stamp cleaner, something. But using paint with that, you definitely wanna get that off. I don't necessarily wash them when I do the ink per se. All right. So let's get this off. Okay, and then let's dry that. And I just got a shipment today. The FedEx guy, got he came this afternoon in the rain. Thankfully, my husband saw it because he put my box right by the garage door with 25 of these. Hello, in the rain, that's not gonna be good. So he, uh, he was just pulling out and my husband said, oh, I think we got a package. And thankfully, the box didn't have a raindrop on it, but we got all those heat tools in. Okay, so it's dry. Doesn't take long. <clears throat> I love this stamp. Yes, and Dev said when the stamps are gone, they're gone. I know. Okay, so this is the next other thing I'm going to tell you guys about. You can get these on Amazon. You can get them at the nail supply store. You can get them at Target, Walmart, wherever. They're cheaper on Amazon when you order them by the bulk. <laughs> it is a nail file, okay? And my nails really need to be done. Um, but it's a nail file. And what I love about them, first off, they're inexpensive. It fits that entire surface. And I just wanna distress this just a little and take some of that asphaltum paint away. And then I just have a baby wipe handy. I'm just going to wipe that right off. If it's still too dark, and let me show you what I mean. Let's see. Okay. So see how much darker that ink is than on my background? To take anything down, you need to knock it back a little. And to do that, we're gonna use our background color. So a little bit of almondine. And let's get a big brush. Let's get like a three quarter. And I have water in my brush and I'm gonna pick up some of that almondine. See how much, I mean, that's inky, inky. Hello, Dawn. All right. So, and then I just wanna paint a little layer right over that background. So it's a wash, it's a wash of color. You can still see our beautifully stamped background, but it, um, it's it been pushed back, right? Now, 
I'm just going to take care of that because I will get my hand in it. And then let's dry that. The other thing with this heat tool is so quiet. <laughs> so, so quiet. I love Almondine too, Deb. My new favorite color though, which kind of surprised me because I'm not big on yellows. Um, I like yellow, but is Sunset Gold. Oh my gosh, guys. This color, amazing. And coming in probably a close second, <laughs> I'm using today Tiger Lily. Again, good idea when you get them to put the year they came out um, on the bottom. I don't know why, I just, okay. So now that we've got that on, let me show you how I did the border. <clears throat> so you can measure in, and all this is in the e-packet um, on my website. I like to use a T-square so that you can make sure that your measurement is exact. I did a quarter inch in, and then after I did the first one, I'm like, I know that I have a quarter inch um, tape. So I got this on Amazon. And the cool thing about it, I will show you, is you can, <clears throat> where's my one that I have? This one right here. Okay. So once I have put a wash, if it needs a wash, then I put one strip of tape. All right. Now I want to make that where the paint is. So how am I going to do that? If you take a ruler and you draw a line, fine, you can paint it in. But I want to make it as straight as possible. So I put one strip of that down. Let's see, is that on top? That's on top. Let's do that first. Okay. So I'm going to put my next piece right there. tear it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that piece, okay, and paint that black, of course, without those. And then once that's done, I can go along the bottom. So let me just show you here. I'm going to lay that in place, remove it. That's where I'm going to do my border, okay? So, on the piece that I have that has the pattern on, this is my suggestion. Um, when you get the packet, or if you buy the packet and you put a line drawing on, put your piece here. Take your line drawing, go ahead and line it up with your piece. That's going to do two things. That's going to give you your, your inside where your pattern's going to go. And I just use transfer paper underneath. Use a pen to transfer the pattern. Um, and then you're going to do your border. Okay, so we're going to do our border now. And I'm going to lay this here. Let's do it for a third time, Sandy. <laughs> right, as close as possible. Remove that tape. And then I took lamp black, a little bit of lamp black. Now, tape's funny. We don't want it to bleed, so you want to kind of burnish where that tape edge is. The other thing you can do is you can use a little bit of matte medium and go over that, let it dry, and then put your paint over it. That will help keep the bleeding. It's such a small area, I didn't worry about it. So let's get, I don't know, like a number eight flat. We'll just load that up. It doesn't matter if it's wet or dry. And then I like to touch the tape and push away. Touch the tape with the brush, push away. Okay. Then when you pull that tape, you want to pull it toward where you just painted, okay? If I pulled it back, anything that was hanging on that tape would go right down here, okay? So that way you get a nice crisp border, right? Now let's do this one because I do want to show you along the bottom. That was a little tricky, but, but easy. It's manageable. 
and then we'll remove that strip. Well, hello. Okay, now if you had a half inch, which I do, the problem with that is if I put a half inch down, I, I need paint there. So this quarter inch worked perfectly. If you don't have this type tape, you can use scotch tape. Um, again, touch that tape, push out and away from that tape. But if it bleeds, I have a fix. All right, and again, pull that tape toward that edge. All right, now let's dry that. How crisp, clean, and easy is that? The tape does stretch and it goes around the curves, Molly Ann. However, um, uh, so Crystal Hendricks, that stamp that I used is on my website. Let me find that right there. And if you use the discount code ART, it'll give you a discount on just about everything on my website. Sales, sales things included. All right, let's get that out of the way. Um, Okay, it does stretch, so let me just show you. I can stretch it and I could go around the edges, however, that was too time consuming for me. <laughs> I'm gonna show you what I did for that, okay? Now, let's come back up here and I'll just use that same piece. Go right over, line it up. You do wanna try and get, and try and do it without getting the top of my hair in the camera there. Um, right on that edge and line it up as best as you can. And so I did that on all three. Like I'd use it on one side and then I would come over and take, you know, this piece off and use it somewhere else. All right. So let's burnish that down just with your fingernail. And that helps keep it in place. Okay. And then again, touch the tape. Push away. Pull it toward, there we go. All right, now down here, I am gonna zoom in just so I can show you this bottom part, what I did. So my line drawing fits in there perfectly. Um, to do the tape around the edge, is a little tricky, even though it stretches. So what I recommend is take your T-square, your ruler, whatever the case may be, and if you come in the quarter of an inch and you can make a little mark, and then you come in a quarter of the inch and make a little mark, that's one way that I did it. The next was I just stepped out on the ledge. <laughs> Um, if you will. And I decided to get a small brush. So like a number four, number five, number six flat. It's not wet. I'm going to load it up with the black paint. And what I did was this is as wide. This number five is as wide as that right there. Now we know when we paint, we tend to push a little bit harder and our paint makes something bigger and bigger. So to initially start, I just set it down and went. And then I came back to get that border on, okay? So again, start there, get that on, come back, making sure all your brush is on. It was much easier to do that than to try and measure, or excuse me, to put that tape all the way around. And then here, again, down, Keep going even if it stutters. There's so many things you could do with this border. You could do little checks. You could do polka dots. I mean, it, there, it's, it'd be super cute, I think, with checks. Okay, so there you got your border. All right, now. I'm gonna move that to the side, and I said I was going to do it, and I didn't, but I have to turn my fan on, because I am roasting. <clears throat> hot, hot, hot. Okay. Now, 
that's the pumpkin, and we're gonna do that next week. Love the way it turned out. Um, very similar to the way I painted the pumpkin in the autumn uh, stacked teacups. So, <laughs> right? I know, Molly Ann, freehand that border. Let me say, I wouldn't freehand the, the sides. I want those too crisp, but down here it was very easy using a number five flat um, because it was perfect. A four would be just a little bit smaller and probably will give you a little bit of wiggle room. Um, okay, so once we get that on the border, um, which I already moved to the side, hello, and I need it. Um, I took my 3 8 angle, and I got it wet. And then I want, I want water in that brush, but not too much. So you can just tap it on your paper towel. A little bit of black, since that's what I used on the border. And I'm just going to work that in on the toe only. All right, so a little bit of black. Work that in. And then with that brush kind of at an angle, I did a little shading right in here on the inside of that border. So you just get a little bit of a bleed. Um, and I like the way that that framed it off. So see that just that very subtle shading right inside that border. Um, it kind of insets it a little bit more. I mean, you could be deliberate and do a really nice dark shading and it would set it in even more but I just wanted something subtle but this is a good way too if your um, line is still a little bit wet you could go in and um, clean it up with your angle brush okay and I'm going right on top of that border and it doesn't matter it's not going to hurt it okay just right to that like that to inset and kind of show off that border a little bit more, okay? So see how that just, oh, I love that. Love, love, love. All righty. So <laughs> thanks, Robin, because the Diet Coke has kicked in. So we'll see how steady I get. Um, all right, so once you get the border on and the shading on and you've transferred your pattern before the shading, um, let me, let me tell you one thing you could do. You could put your one piece of blue tape on, transfer your pattern, base coat it, paint your piece, let it dry, then move your tape over and do your border after. And the reason I tell you that is when you're painting some of these elements very close to the black border, it might get on the black border. If it does, no big deal. Paint will cover it. Um, but just to give you another option, okay? So what I did on this one, which I love, 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 love all the fall colors, kind of reminded me of my shirt that I have on, that's why I wore it. Um, the base coat for the leaves was a one-on-one -on -one mixture. I say one-on-one, -on -one, I brush mix, it's not exact. A little bit of bright yellow, a little bit of warm white, and I'll show you how I did that. Okay, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of warm white. I like brush mixing because it's not exact and you get a variation in color. So instead of taking a palette knife and mixing that down to one color, um, I don't. I just come here, pick up a little bit of that. Well, how about if I get on the camera? A little bit of that, a little bit of that, and I just sit there and mix it, okay? and then go to your piece and base coat it. So you can adjust. If you're like, oh, that's too yellow, need a little bit more warm white, bring a little bit more warm white in, all right? So I base coated all three of those leaves with bright yellow and warm white. The caps on the acorns, asphaltum. And um, I still had the warm white in my brush, so that's why they're a little bit light. And then the acorns, I went ahead and painted with warm white. All right. Now, <clears throat> like I mentioned, these with a, a brown border, let me show you how that's done since we have some asphaltum. If you wanted a filler or if you wanted to do your border like that, I know y'all probably have seen me do this before if you've watched me live. 
Um, I think you did happen to have any imperfections in your border that the shading might hide that some. Absolutely. Um, the, the shading is definitely going to help that. Okay, so with that baby wipe wrapped around my um, index finger and then that's shoved into my palm, you can pick up a little bit of asphaltum and then you want to work that in just like you would a brush, like an angle brush, okay? And then t with your palm on the inside of your surface, that is key. If it's out here, it's going to leave a very defined line. Whereas if I put that on, with that baby wipe, the baby wipe's wet and it's going to gradate out a little bit for me. I can round off those corners. Okay. And have another little piece for my, um, you know, filler in between each of your designs. All right. So let's move those out of the way. And that and that. We'll come to this one. Okay, so this was easy, <laughs> um, and I giggle because it's so easy, but um, there's not like a, you're going to put this color here and that color here and this color here. It's kind of a hodgepodge, so um, I'm going to put out some antique green, and I'm using the Decor Americana, uh, my second favorite next to the, <laughs> my favorite favorite, the media line which I so wanted to use on this. Um, so antique green, a little bit of plantation pine. We'll put out some sunset gold. Thank you, Debbie Matthews. I love that uh, baby wipe technique, so easy. And see all this paint I'm putting out? Let me tell you, all of us online right now could paint that. <laughs> Um, and someone asked, I forgot to say, the way to um, be entered into the giveaways um, is to like, comment, and share. So like, comment, share, share with your friends, share on Facebook, share on YouTube. Um, there's three little dots there on YouTube. You can share that link to your Facebook or anywhere else, and then people will find us. Okay, so um, I have, let's see, I need a little bit of jack-o'-lantern orange. Try and be a little better. <laughs> put, put too much out. And a little bit of tiger lily, just a touch. I don't even know if I use this on mine, but but I might. Um, now I have to tell y'all, when I do this, I'm cheap. <laughs> I'm not really, but when it comes to my paint, I kind of am. That's way too much paint. And it's a new color, and I have one, so I'm going to pick up some of that dry brush, nothing on it. Probably not the best practice, but I don't use a wet brush to do that. Okay, let's do that so you can see both. Can you see both? I want you to be able to see up close and see my palette if possible. Okay. Um, and then I need a tiny touch of Payne's Gray, but we'll get that out in just a minute. So I'm going to use a small brush, like a four or a six, What's that one? That one is a five. I can do that. It's right in between. Um, and I'm going to take that and pick up just a little bit of water. Some antique green. Now look how I'm picking it up on my palette. I'm not dunking it in. I'm pulling it. So the chisel edge is touching that paint. And then I'm going to just kind of lightly put it on and mush it around with my finger. Now, if you don't want to use your finger, you can use a mop brush. So you can use that medium or small IPC uh, mop. I have that on my website. Um, so we're just going to put a little bit of green. This is antique green here and there. Now, I can still see my line drawing underneath. So, in fact, I want to move that so you guys can see that more. Okay, so I'll move that or just kind of tap it out. We don't want any harsh line right now. Okay, now look how opaque these are. I mean, the colors start layering and building, but I did an initial layer of color. 
and just kind of mushed it around with my finger. Very technical, right? Okay, this is my first color. Let's dry that though, because I want to show you a really cool trick. When you are painting your piece, if you're like, oh, I've got that element on, and you know, typically you could wait and put those elements on later. I don't. I guess I'm a lazy painter sometimes. But, but if you want to help yourself out, do yourself a favor and start doing a little bit of shading. So I'm going to go back to that 3 8 angle. And I'll pick up just a touch of water. And then over here on my palette, I'm going to pick up some um, plantation pine and a touch of asphaltum. Get a really pretty color, okay? Now, I know that this leaf lays on top. I can see it the way I painted my base coat. I can still see that. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of guidance of where that leaf is, okay? So right, that leaf now is under that leaf. A little tiny touch of plantation pine, little touch of um, asphaltum, and I can go around my acorn there. Tiny, tiny touch of both. I've got water in my brush just a touch so that it moves. And then on that side of the acorn, I can do it in the middle of those acorns, but that will just help give you some guidelines and separation between your elements, okay? Now, let's rinse that out. Now I'm gonna keep with this 3 8 angle, get a little bit of water on my brush, and I'm going to pick up just a little bit of jack-o'-lantern orange, work it in on the toe, like you can see I'm doing there. So if you're not familiar with an angle brush, toe and a heel. Um, but it doesn't matter if it gets on the whole brush, okay? Because you'll see why. I'm just gonna start laying in some color here, there, but not everywhere. Okay, I might want a little orange over here. Kind of turn it, a little bit of orange over here. This is underneath, yep, that's underneath. And let's, let's beef this one up just a little bit with some shading, because I can't see the separation with that as well. There we go. And then again, you can take that mop, kind of just soften it out. All right, let's rinse that because it's got dark color in it. So back to the jack-o'-lantern orange, which is transparent, so you're gonna get a really pretty color. And this is exactly what I did for these leaves, just going back and forth between colors and layering um, these transparent, beautiful colors to create these leaves. Um, a little bit of plantation pine now what you do want to do is you want them to dry in between layers. That orange was wet, so I'm just going to dry that. Back to a little plantation pine. And so when you put that over the orange when it's dry, you'll still be able to see it. If you go over it when it's wet, you're just going to cover it right up. So, so again, a little bit of plantation pine right in that shaded area. Use your finger. Don't be afraid to use your finger. Okay, so again, just on that plantation pine, a little bit of water in your brush just to get it to move. Thanks, Robin. <laughs> I love using my fingers, as you guys know. It's, I love my brushes, but when you need it to soften quickly before it dries, I just do that and move it around. I do feel it gives a little bit more painterly look than, you know, 
trying to be real exact, which y'all know I'm not. All right, let's turn that and get a little bit on this one. I'd say of the three, this one's a little bit more just kind of willy-nilly putting these colors on and where you want them. If you want your leaves to be a little more orange, make them a little more orange. You could even put red would be really pretty. Okay, now let's pick up a little bit of that sunset gold. Oh, oh my new favorite color. I love it. And so very, very little paint. You see my brush there? Very little paint. My brush is damp slightly, so it's going to keep that paint moving. And my finger's gonna help move it around. Okay. Hello, Rebecca. The palette shows a face. Hi, forehead. <laughs> I love it when people see something like that. Um, <laughs> is this the, the high forehead? You'll have to let me know. Sue. <laughs> Too funny. Hello, Tracy Jones. So good to see you here. And Joyce. Alrighty. So, a little bit more water in my brush. And let's pick up some of that tiger lily. Ugh, which is just gorgeous. Okay, we'll lay some of that in. Again, here, there, not everywhere. We want it to be um, a little more realistic, I guess you could say, with those colors. And on a leaf, you might have it change on this one different than that one. So if I did the orange in every single place, I know my members will know what I call that <laughs> um, as cookie cutter, and I don't do cookie cutter very well. I like to just make it, again, a little more painterly, not as exact, and loosen up. If you've got a death grip on that brush, it's exactly how it's going to translate to your leaf, okay? Plus, your hand's going to get real tired. If you get on the acorns, don't worry. The reason I base coated those was so that I knew where they were. Um, but we will take care of those later, okay? And we'll have to base coat them again. All right, so a little bit of that tiger lily. I am gonna rinse out my brush. Hello, Janice. Hello, Laura. Yes, the stroke is the forehead, so. <laughs> yeah, so high forehead, two eyes, I'm presuming, and a mouth. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Okay. So, I'm going to take some uh, antique green. Back to the antique green. On the toe of that angle brush, just kind of work it in. You can use whatever brush. The angle brush just helped me get into those little areas. A little bit more antique green. And because you, you're doing it this way, each time you paint it like this is gonna be different, okay? Now, if you don't wanna make a banner with these, they're, they're like an ornament, how I think adorable these would be to do, and then you could put some ribbon and put it um, around a napkin or at a place setting for Thanksgiving. Um, so many things, put it on a gift. If you're invited somewhere for Thanksgiving, put it you know, on a bottle of wine or a housewarming gift or something, um, I think would just make a beautiful gift. And then you always wanna finish it. So the way I would finish the back is to do the, um, to stamp the back and finish it. You know, and then of course sign it because you painted it. So. Hello, Janet. Thank you so much. Alrighty, now let's start darkening these colors up just a little bit. So I'm going to use um, another 2022 color red spice. Um, if you don't have this, you could use, I don't want to mess up the forehead. <laughs> um, you can use burnt sienna, but I have to tell you guys what this color reminds me of. Let me see if I have it here. I do. Okay, not exact, but 
Is that the right one? Yeah. Um, so this is quinacridone gold in the media line, which I love. Let me just brush that out. Okay. So that's the quinacridone gold. Now, the red spice has a little bit more red to it. However, a little red spice and a touch of asphaltum. Did you see that? <laughs> Quinacridone gold in the media line. Red spice just came out. I have wanted something that looks like quinacridone gold in Americana. That's too bright, too much of a red tone, but a little asphaltum. And look how close those two colors are right there. I was, my, I was flipping a wig, let me just say, because I was so thrilled and excited when I saw that. Alrighty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that, um, <laughs> I forgot the name of it already. It's new, Red Spice. And I'm going to work that in on the toe of my brush. And then I want to pick up some asphaltum on the toe of my brush and work that in. You can see right there on the screen, I'm working that in on the toe only. So there's no paint on the heel. And I want to float that color down the stem. So I'll start there. And I can, um, I can darken that up, which I will later. Needed a little bit of water in my brush to get that to move. I'm just gonna soften that. Oh, I love, love, love that you can make quinacridone gold out of those two colors. So I need a little bit more asphaltum in there. Paint that stem on. Again, soften, soften, soften. Right, almost an exact match. I love it. Um, <laughs> Joyce, yes, um, with the asphaltum, I I would say I'm, I probably use Payne's Gray more, but I have used asphaltum for a long time. And I think all of us use it now because of Tracy Moreau, right? Okay, so we want to put that, oh, need to move my hand. Put that there. Okay, so I like that shading there. I like how the rich, deep, very wimpy. So we will come back in and just darken that. So we've got our veins on there. Sometimes I'll do that too, just to soften it. And then we need some little side veins. So red spice, asphaltum, work that in. Need a little me, a little water in there. Work that in. Okay, now we want to put in these little, get my hand out of the way these little vein lines. So the toe is down. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that color right in that shaded area. And so watch, I'm gonna touch and I'm going to almost like an S stroke. Now, look what that just did for that leaf. That's exactly how we're gonna start building that color up. So some red spice, a little bit of asphaltum, work that in. And again, not ex exact on how much of each. So if you go to paint your stroke and you're like, eh, too red, add a little bit more asphaltum. Okay, let's turn that. And we're going to, oops, too thick. So if my float got a little thick, I'm just gonna pinch off that heel just a touch. No better. Okay, so red spice, asphaltum. We will come right in here. Now, if you're not, you know, real, ugh, I don't know where to put those, you can always go back to the pattern um, in the packet and put that on, but I just wing it. And as 
if it's not exactly like my original, I don't care. Neither should you. Okay. that on a little more asphaltum starting to get a little bit on that red side Barb Schweibel yes I will be at OKC painting Palooza in fact I'm um, doing the opening special event on Saturday um, and Elizabeth Stoll's doing that with me and then I have um, uh, creative art journaling class, which I'm excited about, and uh, white poppies. So I have three classes and a full um, 10 by 30 booth that will be full of products. <laughs> okay, so I do want to get a little bit underneath that cap there, even though that's a highlighted spot, and a little bit between those three acorns there. Okay. Let's see if anything's standing out. All right, let's dry that. I'm not real thrilled with this one. Let's see if we darken that just a touch. There we go. Okay. In fact, I'm going to take that dark right along that side. Again, that's just that red spice asphaltum. If you're not familiar with um, OKC Painting Palooza, let me see if I have that on here. You guys have got to check it out. It's right there. Um, OKC Painting Palooza, that's, those are the dates for this year. That's their website. You can go look at all the different classes they offer. Fantastic, amazing convention. And people, <laughs> I don't want conventions to go away. So you have to start going, okay? Um, I wish I could pay for everyone to go. So great convention. Check it out. All right, so now we have those on. Now I need to start lightening some things up and bringing a little bit of green in. So I want to brighten some things up with some citron green. You could also use, I didn't, but you could. You could use some sour apple or some neon green. Um, oh, wonderful, Barb. Thanks. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate that. Maybe it's a better floating day today than what's been in the past. Let me tell you, I have struggled with my floating lately. It's one of those things that you either have a great day or not so good day. All right, I am going to put a little bit of that sour apple out because I think it's so pretty. Now, a color that I did, and I only used it in a couple of places in the packet. I almost hated to put it in there. Um, but a little bit of doxing purple because I think that's such a fantastic fall color that's underutilized, maybe not used as much. Okay, and look how misshaped my acorn got there. So I'm going to come right back to that 3 8 angle. You can always switch to a quarter inch if you wanted to, but I'm going to take some of that citron, which I have right down here, a little bit of citron green and a little bit of that warm white and just kind of work that in somewhere. A little bit more citron. Work that in. Just gonna swipe that across. Okay, and then I'm going to just lighten some of these areas. Again, don't be afraid to use your finger. We're gonna dry brush, because you know I love the look of a dry brush. A little bit of that. Because this is so thin, my shading is still gonna show through. In fact, it will help it look a little bit more natural because we have to darken it anyway. Remember, I told you we've got to darken it with a little bit more asphaltum. So that's citron green, a little bit of warm white. Titanium white would make it a little too bright right now. Put a little bit of that on. Now, you can do that step before you do the shading of the vein and everything. I Again, for me, when I'm painting, I like to give myself guidance and placement. And so knowing that those sections are kind of determined, I can 
place my color a little bit more strategically is just why I do it. And I don't mind painting the same element, you know, darkening it up because I, it's one of the things I check at the end of every painting anyway is how light or dark, um, excuse me, my lights or my highlights, my shading, if it needs to be darkened or it needs to be lightened. Okay, this one over here has got some bright green in here. Make sure I'm on camera. Again, this is where I'm talking. You could get into that black border a little bit. And if you do, just, you know, paint over it. Not the end of the world. Thank goodness, right? All righty. So, got that brighter green on there. I'm going to rinse that off. <laughs> I'm trying not to take away from the face <laughs> on my palette. Hi, Linda. Um, oh, I was just reading Palooza's great, very nice trade show. No need to be affiliated with. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's a great event that um, is themed. And this year, the theme is show your patriotic colors. I love that. Um that they theme it. It makes it easy to do your booth. There's um, contests for the booth. Sorry, I just put a little bright yellow on my brush as I talk. I want to brighten this up just a touch. And then I'm going to pick up some of that sour apple, even though I didn't use it. It's so pretty. I'm going to just add a pop of that green. The classes are amazing. The teachers are amazing. The... Um, it's just organized beautifully. With Sherry and Larry Roll and Darla Foreman and Jeanette. And um, in fact, Jeanette has an anniversary today. So Jeanette, happy anniversary. You're probably not watching, but 63 years is an accomplishment. Okay, so look how that's coming together. Okay, now let's make sure everything is dry. Oh, thank you, Norma Luther. That's so sweet of you. Yeah, this that sour apple just adds a punch of color, doesn't it? So as I was getting my paints together yesterday, I thought, oh, I'm going to grab that just in case. <laughs> um, okay, now, it's not in the directions, but I'm going to tell you when you're doing something like this, on my piece here, I didn't really have to, but I'm seeing that it needs to be brought together a little bit. So, I'm going to take my 3 8 angle and pick up some of my uh, little bit of water. And I'm going to come over here and I want to pick up some plantation pine. And I'm just going to work that into my brush. Now, what I'm going to do is basically paint a wash over the entire leaf. Okay? It's thinned down with water. It's a wash. It's not heavy paint. What that's going to do is it's going to bring together all those colors. Make them make sense. When you start to fight your paint, just pick up a little bit more water in your brush to get that to move. just like that and then let's dry that so yeah it just I don't know just does something to soften the whole look I'm signed up for OKC can't wait I have a class per day with different teachers to try new things fabulous yes and Bonnie just said um, even though Bear With Us is gone they're no longer a company Bob and Katie are still very active they sure are um, when you do this wash, are you using the entire brush? So yes, Norma, when I paint a wash, I don't care necessarily if it's on the whole brush, especially on my angle, which I typically try to keep the paint on the toe. Um, and I'm going to do that now to darken this shading just a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to take my angle brush, get a little bit of water, pick up some asphaltum 
on the toe of the brush only. So here I'm more methodical with loading that. See the paint's right there? And I'm going to float that right down that center vein just to darken it up a little bit. Not too dark, but I want it a little darker than that. The dry brushing of those brighter colors, oh, just really brings this, the dimension of these leaves out. A little bit more asphaltum. Let's get these wimpy little guys that I did. <laughs> Floated that on very wimpy. Okay, now I'm gonna keep that asphaltum on and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of Payne's Gray. Just a touch. I don't wanna get it mixed with my black. Now, I like to use the Media Payne's Gray because it's transparent, it's gorgeous, and it's highly pigmented. Um, but you can also use any Payne's Gray, okay? And we're gonna darken some of these areas before we start with our um, dry brushing. Get that on. And then this one comes up underneath there. Oh, just look how that... Are you guys just amazed sometimes at what paint can do? I am. Okay, so little Payne's Gray, almost stuck it in my block. Little Asphaltum. Work that in, tiny touch of water. Oh, Isabella, thank you, Isabella. That's very sweet of you. Okay, oops, too much. Okay, so see how much more impactful that shading is than what we had before? Um, now I have to fix the shape of that thingy, <laughs> that acorn up. Because it, it's seen better shape days there. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that asphaltum, a little bit of plantation pine. Just want to darken this up a little bit. Also down here. Plantation pine, asphaltum. Those two colors work so beautifully together. Get that a little bit darker down there. All right, now let's rinse that out. I'm going to do some highlights, some dry brush highlighting, and then one of my favorite things are like these little divots here. So um, I'm gonna use a small mezzaluna brush. Um, these are stiff. They have a little soft, stiff bristle um, intermixed and they're beautiful for dry brushing. So I'm going to start with, um, I think I'll start with some yellow, bright yellow and white. That's warm white and just mix that together. And the key with dry brushing, my brush is not wet, and then I wanna wipe almost all of it off. Okay, and then we're going to dry brush these into the, our little sections. I'll leave a little paint on there so I can show you. Okay, now the fix, if you get them too bright or too light, all you have to do is come back with a little bit of uh, like antique green or plantation pine and put that on. Okay, So a little bit of bright yellow and white, warm white. I'm putting it on and as you can see, I'm rubbing it with my finger just to kind of push it down into that just a little bit more. You can use a regular brush for that if you'd like. All right, so let's get a little bit brighter up in here. 
a little bit more warm white with that. I don't know why my paper towels are over there. <laughs> It'd be like me having my paint over here, which is a big pet peeve of mine. You want it on the same side that your hand is. Just makes it easier. It's not a rule. It's just my preferred method. Put a little bit there. But doesn't that make them look almost like you could like touch them and feel them? They've got shape. They've got, uh, they're just not flat. And I love that. And I don't even know that I need to come back and do any of that shading. Um, Cause I like the way it looks. All right, now I'm gonna take wipe off my brush and I'm gonna pick up just warm white. Work that in, wipe almost all of it off. Aw, thank you, Mary Jane, I appreciate that. Little touches in the brightest spots with that warm white. Hi, Yvonne, down under, how are ya? I know I always ask, but what time is it in Australia right now? So again, you put it on, don't be so tempted to get a wet brush or a baby wipe or feel like you gotta take it off. Scrub it with your finger. Okay, oh, I'm digging those. Alrighty. The surface Marlene that I'm using is <clears throat> this one right here, SLD. PK763, and in the description on Facebook, I, um, I have a link to her website, but it's tollpaintingdesigns.com. All right, let's get a little bit of water in our brush, and I'm going to pick, come back and pick up a little bit of the um, jack-o'-lantern orange, and when you hit that where it's highlighted, oh, it looks so Looks so pretty. That orange just really pops. Okay, and again, not everywhere, just here and there. Everywhere would be too much. Okay. And then I'm going to take my 3 8 angle, pick up a little bit of asphaltum on the toe, tiny touch. Like the tiniest, look, tiny touch of Payne's Gray, okay? And we want to accentuate some of these little divots. So um, like right in, do I have one there? I have one here. And so think of it like a little U, and then we want to soften the wings on the left and the right, okay? Now, let me zoom in just a touch more, and I'm going to use asphaltum. I used Payne's Gray on that one. I don't want to use Payne's Gray and asphaltum on all of them. Um, oops, hello, Sandy. Put your brush right down. So let's take care of this over here. Again, just soften that the edges, almost like the little wings on both sides. Let's do a little one right here. Okay. Just get a little bit of that divot. That one got a little dark, so I'll show you how to fix it. But not right this second. Um, where else do I have one? Right here. And then we'll just soften that out, soften that out. Okay. Get that right to the edge. Oh, I just love that look. All right, so I am going to come back with my brush, my uh, Mezzaluna, a little bit of white, warm white, a little bit of yellow. Wipe almost all of it off. And here where I got a little dark, I'm just going to dry brush a little bit of color. some of that citron green 
and you could just sit here and play all day but we don't have time for that so <laughs> okay now along here and along here where those leaves meet we want to brighten that up just a little bit so a little citron or you can use some antique green or you can use both um, and a little bit of warm white because you have to have light to see dark and dark to see light right so if we have two darks butted up against each other it's hard to see whereas when you have something that's brighter and something that's darker it's going to show up better okay. and then on this one and i think sometimes you can fall into that trap of oh my highlighted sides over here i can't have a highlight there yeah you can yeah you can <laughs> you don't want it as bright as your brightest highlight but it certainly can be a little bit lighter it doesn't always have to be dark Let's get a little bit of plantation pine just to soften that. There, 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 there. Okay. The other thing I have on this one that I absolutely love, see that little tip? Oops, get on the camera. That little tip on the leaf. So a little bit of asphaltum. I'm just going to put a little bit on those tips. Just like that. Okay. And then I took a liner brush. So I have, um, this one is a 5 aught liner. You can use a rigger, whatever. But I want to come over here and pick up a little bit of this warm white. My brush is wet. I'm just kind of roll that. And that has a little bit of yellow in it. And I'm not fussed with that at all. And I wanted to just do a little bit of a decorative element on those leaves. Kind of accentuate the edge. So just mimic that edge. And then I touch it just to soften the look. Okay, let's tackle these acorns, which are pretty, pretty quick. Um, so I'm going to go back to my asphaltum, which I need more of. Where is my asphaltum? Thank you, Molly Ann. Molly Ann put the link to Sheila Landry's website in the comments on Facebook. Thank you. Um, in crafting, you can't be afraid to get a little down and dirty to get the job done. Right, MS, on, on YouTube? Absolutely. And hello, Linda from Michigan. All right, so asphaltum. And I'm going to paint these little caps again. These came together so quickly, um, which is good because it'll give us time to tackle that lettering. Alrighty. So we've got those caps, and I'm gonna rinse that out. Get that up there where you can see it. And let's fix these acorns up that are a little misshaped. All right, so I'm going to go back to my warm white. Pick up some of that warm white. And I'm just going to turn that so I can get that brush under there. Make a little bit of a point. I had too much water in my brush. You can see that. And rounded. Okay, we have that one. And that one just goes right to that border. So I'm just going to be a little careful when I get close to that. Get the shape as if I'm drawing it so let me turn that around you could always lay you know your line drawing back on make sure it's exact but why
as you can see, I don't. Let's just lay it on there. Okay, let's dry those because that needs another coat. white and if you don't have warm white just use titanium white it's just gonna make it a little bit brighter not nothing wrong with that okay rinse that out dry it again Now I'm gonna take the, um, I wanna work in layers just like we did with the leaves, but I'm gonna take that brush, this is a number five flat, doesn't matter what you use, four, five, six, um, a little bit of that warm white and back to a little bit of the um, bright yellow. That's what we base coated those leaves with first. And I'm just going to go back over that just to bring a little bit of some brightness to it as we layer these colors. Okay, let's dry those. Hello, Paula. So good to see you here. So when you use that heat tool, you want to make sure that you, um, you know, make sure that it's dry. I mean, that it's not hot before you go to add your next color on, okay? Um, so I'm gonna take my quarter inch angle. So um, quarter inch angle, get that wet, and I'm gonna come over to that red spice. And I'm looking at my original, I think I have a tiny touch of asphaltum with that. So red spice and asphaltum. Now I, you can use a liner brush when you're doing this. I just like the way an angle brush, you can slide on that chisel edge. And when you slide with no pressure and the handle, everything moves at the same rate, it's like you're ice skating. All right, so think of it like you're ice skating. And you do have to have some moisture in your brush. So it doesn't matter if the color migrates off the toe, but it, it'll help you control where that paint's gonna go. So I'm just going to slide on that chisel edge. And if you um, saw my Ane anemone, <laughs> I have a hard time with that word, anemone, flowers, welcome sign um, on YouTube. I did the same thing on those petals. It's just a nice little way to add some detail lines. And I'm just sliding very thin. I, ha I feel like I have more control with my angle brush than I do my liner brush to do those. Okay. And they're going to get covered up, so it doesn't matter how bad they look. But you're going to see them underneath. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, Marilyn. All righty. So, now we want to do just bright yellow. So, we did warm white. And bright yellow, all right, that's dry. So we're gonna do some bright yellow. I wanna start brightening these up just a touch. A little too much, Sandy. So put a little water in your brush. Okay, and let's dry those. They're really, really bright now, aren't they? <laughs> But we're gonna dry brush and shade. Alrighty, back to the angle brush. Doesn't matter, three eighths or a quarter. 
Um, sunset gold. A little on the toe of the brush. Oops, got it everywhere. A little on the toe of the brush. And we're going to float that on the left side. Left side of that one. My hand just went into my palette. See? <laughs> but I want you guys to be able to see my palette too. But look how that warms that up. Um, so I use this on the sunflowers too. Um, and I ended up using it on the letters. But I am going to show you an option. Because after I got done, I'm like, oh, I kind of wish I had done that. But I was done and I liked it, so I left it, which is my number one rule in painting. Okay, now look at the difference between the three and how much orange, orangey goodness that one has. Okay, and then we'll do a little bit on that side. And then just kind of bring it over a little bit. Right? Now that was fully loaded on the toe of the brush. My um, my paint got out. I'm going to show you how to fix that when we shade. Um, but what I want to do now is I'm going to take my number five, pick up a little bit of water, pick up a tiny touch of that sunset gold. And when you paint a wash, it's much thinner than when you paint, you know, when you float that color on. So I'm going to take down some of that bright, bright yellow with a little bit of that sunset gold. Okay. And then let's put a little bit of jack-o'-lantern orange. You can also use, so you can see on my palette there on the toe, and put some jack-o'-lantern orange. You can even put a little tiger lily, which I did not, but let's just see what it looks like. Oh yeah. So we'll put that on that darker side. And then notice how I'm just kind of walking it over just a little. It's called walking a float. And so I have that color just on the toe. Jack-o'-lantern. And I did put a tiny touch of um, tiger lily, which I did not do on my original, but I like that glow. Jack-o'-lantern. Tiny touch, tiniest touch of jack-o'-lantern. I mean, excuse me, of uh, tiger lily. That'd make great candy corn colors, right? Bright yellow, sunset gold, tiger lily, little jack-o'-lantern orange, right? Let's dry those. Oh, soup hots, <laughs> a girl after my own heart. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I don't know what I'll do, but I could throw something together. Okay, now look how bright those are and how diffused these are. <laughs> now what's gonna diffuse them is some um, dry brushing, but then also some shading. So I'm gonna come back with my, um, my Mezzaluna and I am gonna pick up some warm white Work that in. It has um, bright yellow in it, and I'm totally fine with that. And I'm just, hello. I'm going to dry brush a little on this side. I'm doing uh, soft circular motions because if you go back and forth, that's what you get. Soft circular motions, you have no line. So, Soft circular motions, a little bit of warm white and that bright yellow, just brighten that up. And I say bright yellow because it's already in my puddle there. A little bit of warm white. Alrighty, three eighths angle, a little bit of medium. 
I keep saying medium, a little bit of water, um, asphaltum. You could use medium. You could use some fast drying glaze or um, I wouldn't use extender, some flow medium or something like that. Okay, asphaltum on the toe of my brush. Now I'm going to come right up underneath the cap. Right up underneath the cap. That's my first float. So I want to go right up underneath the cap, too wide, come back in, just kind of push it right up into that cap if you need to. And then I just want to softly bring it down to diffuse some of those colors. Okay, so again, underneath the cap, softly bring it down to diffuse some of those colors. And then let's do that one. Oh, sad day. Too much. So I'll have to bring that down. Okay, now see how much that diffused that, that yellowy orange? Although I love how bright they are. And I like that pop of the uh, tiger lily. You can tell the difference. I didn't use tiger lily on my original. Um, but I do love that, that look it gave. All right, so let's dry that. And we're going to deepen that just a little. And this time we'll deepen it with a touch of, so asphaltum and a touch of Payne's Gray. Work that in somewhere on your palette. Okay. This is really what's going to darken this. So we'll go underneath the cap and then I am going to bring it over to this darker side which is that bottom side, bottom side, bottom side, and then take your little soft mop, and kind of soften that out. Thank you, Wendy. I, th I think a lot of it's I pity pat float more so than just pull the brush flat. I don't have a lot of luck pulling the brush just flat. Um, it tends to look, leave too much of a line. So I do almost like small little circular motions. And that was wet. And when you float wet on top of wet, guess what you get? <laughs> that. A line. Okay. So I try not to go over my floats more than twice. Sometimes a little more like that was so wet. Um, it lifts, it lifts your color. Okay, so a little bit under the cap. We'll come down that left side a little bit, right to that border. Okay, and I really messed this one up going over that again. But as you know, I always have a fix. And I, let me just hold this up because I want to show you something. Like Sue saw, you know, the forehead and the eyes and the mouth. When when you see things like this and you're like, oh, my initial instinct many years ago would have been, oh, I got to fix that. I got to, you see things like that in nature, right? So I would leave that. Now, what I did on this one when I did that second float was see how my highlight went away? I still have a bright spot, bright spot. I need to bring that bright spot back. So we're going to bring it back a little bit of warm white, a little bit of bright yellow, and just bring a little highlight right back to it. Okay, let's take care of these cappers, these little caps. So back to the asphaltum. And we're just going to paint those again. Okay, let's dry that. We're almost done. Got the letters. Those are easy though. She says. 
All right, I've got to find another mezzaluna because I stuck mine in the water, which is not good. Not for your, not when you're still in the middle of dry brushing. So I grabbed a medium. Let's see if I've got a small. I've got one there. All right, so a little warm white, and I'm going to load that up on my mezzaluna right there. Wipe it off. And then little touch more there because I feel like it went away. A little more touch there. I still feel like this one could use some sunset gold. I might, might put some sunset gold on there. Okay. Now on those caps, what I did was little dry brush on those caps, just to, to pronounce them a little bit more, make them a little bit more shapely. Little dry brush. But then I wanted them to have a little more texture. So with that mezzaluna, I'm going to load it up with some white, work that in. And this time, instead of taking all the paint off, I just want to swipe it across my paper towel. And then I'm going to tap it. Right in the center, just to get a brighter texture, highlight of color right there in the center. And guess what? If you get it too bright, a wash of asphaltum over it, okay? Which is exactly what I did on this one. You can still see that highlight, but you have um, it toned down a little bit. So wet brush, asphaltum, wash over it, dry it. I have to fix that acorn, it's driving me crazy. Not that it has to look like my original, but it certainly has to look like an acorn. So I'm going to come back to that sunset gold. Ooh, that's hot. Let's brighten that just a touch. Then I'm going to go to my quarter inch angle and I do want it to darken um, that shading up just a touch right up underneath that cap and that's asphaltum with a tiny touch of Payne's gray that just makes it look like that cap sitting on top of that acorn and a little bit of a shadow. Let's bring some of that right down. Okay, now remember what I said over here where that got, you know, that acorn got a little too big. I can come in with some asphaltum and plantation pine on the toe of that angle brush and I can take away some of that with shading. And then I want to put just a little bit in there. Just darken that up. Okay. So there are our acorns. Let's go on to our letters real quick. Oh, thank you, Denise. I cannot wait to see you in OKC. It's been forever. Hello, Lois. Okay. So our letters, what I did... Um, is transferred them on and I did one um, layer with warm white. Then you have a couple of choices. You can use an angle brush or you can use 
like a number four, a number two flat um, to do a cast shadow. So I'm gonna show you both ways. So let's get our angle brush wet. And you can use Ashfaltum or Payne's Gray. My go-to is Payne's Gray. So I'm going to load the toe of that brush up with some Payne's Gray and just work it in on the toe only. And we wanna add the shading on the inside. Well, that didn't work very well, did it? And then on the outside over here, okay? That's what I call wimpy shading. We don't wanna be a wimpy floater. We wanna be able to see it. And you can use your mop to soften that if you want to. Um, typically, I will use my other brush because I like the way it looks. Um, and if you if paint's gray is too dark, you could always use asphaltum, okay? But we just wanna see it. And the reason I do one layer of warm white first is so that I can see it where my letters are, and then if my float gets too big, I can always correct it. Okay, so let's just do a couple more with this angle brush, and then I'll show you my favorite. So a little under there. Okay, flat brush. I'm gonna use, uh, let's see here. I've got a four, I'm looking for my two but I don't know that I have a two handy here. So it might have to be, it might have to be a four. Okay. So you wanna get your brush wet and it doesn't matter what it's on. So I can pick it up on the whole brush as you can see there. But we wanna make it nice and thin. So a little bit more water. And then I can come right up underneath right beside and I just personally feel like I get a much better shadow and if it gets a little wide which it might with my four a two is perfect um, I feel like a liner brush sometimes make it makes it too much of a line whereas this inky is almost like I did it with the angle brush Okay. So it just lifts those letters, doesn't it? Okay, let's take a little bit of that Payne's Gray down here while we're at it. And I can put some right on the side of the leaf where it would cast a shadow. Maybe a little underneath that acorn. Not down the whole leaf, but maybe on this darker area and then that goes right into the black okay now we want to take our rigger or a liner brush whichever you're more comfortable with this is a zero rigger and get it wet load it up with my um, warm white and we're just going to Paint our letters again, okay? So again, putting that initial layer on, doing your shading, coming back, will help fix up any of that shading that maybe got a little cray cray. We still have volume. I just, <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I concentrate a lot when I'm doing lettering. And I do want to show you a trick. Although I still want to do Sue's idea, which is do something with my palette paint. It might be comical, but. All right, now let's dry that. Let that set for a second. And 
Jones. Let that set up for just a minute. So if you've got, um, if you want to letter something, but you don't want to print it off, you want to use your handwriting. I strongly suggest, I'm looking for a white graphite pencil, which I don't think I have. I have a Signo though, okay. So you could do, Okay. Now you could continue to go over that and over that and over that. I would do it with a pencil. This is when I'm like writing something. If I don't use something that I've printed off with font that I've purchased, then I'll write it out. So you can take your brush now that you have written it and Embellish it a little if you want to. Okay, but see how that thin handwriting can then become something very decorative. Oop, that had a big old dollop of water. Okay, and when you do it with a pencil or like that, I did this with the white Signo pen, I could remove it. Okay, but see how that paint and that movement just flowy takes it from being just your handwriting. To being so much more decorative. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now back to our piece. So I'm gonna take the quarter inch angle and I'm gonna show you um, what I did, which is sunset gold. However, when I got done, I was done, I was photographing everything, I thought, ooh, I kinda wish I had used antique green. Um, the yellow brings them all together because there's yellow in all the pieces, however, um, there's green in all of them too, and I thought that antique green would be really, really pretty. So a little bit of sunset gold on the toe of my angle brush. You can see I've got some water in there. It's moving, and I just want to do a soft little layer, right? It's like a wash, so if I get any heavier areas around, I can just take a clean brush and get it off. But I am trying to stay pretty much on the letter. And you can make it as dark or as light as you want to. You could, you know, you can come back in and add a second layer. You could darken it with a little asphaltum, right? But humor me, <laughs> let's try that antique green. I just think it'd be so pretty. So a little antique green. which has a yellow, um, a yellow cast to it, but, oh, that's pretty. It's a very yellowy green, but really pretty green too. Okay, so either or, you might even be able to tell the difference, I can in person, um, but a little bit more green, and certainly if you dry it, and add an additional layer, you, um, it will build up the color. It's much easier to build the color up than it is to try and take a whole bunch of paint off from your background. All right. Oh yeah. But I did use Sunset Gold, okay? Just so you can see the difference. And you could ombre it up if you want to. I like the letters being a little bit on the, that brighter side. Um, so let me just move that out of the way and I'll grab a journal, but I want to show you this again. So my original, um, that one's still too dark, so I would brighten it up. 
but let me just show you this up close the the little lines you can still see through and I do have which I see that I did not do I have a little bit of a highlight right there with a little bit of warm white okay and that brightens it up as well okay so Sue Potts asked, <laughs> I'm crazy for doing this, but let's me, let me find something. Okay. So on my journal pages, I typically will um, have gesso on them. I'm going to bounce out here. Let's go right to here. All righty. Maybe a little more. Okay, so I usually put gesso on them. I don't have any prepped with gesso, I don't think. Oh, I, this one is. Oh, that one is. This one has some cool texture that has gesso on it. Um, but if you miss Sue Potts' comment about taking my palette, one thing I love to do when I'm done painting, um, I don't like to waste all this paint, so I'll paint something. And I might end up having to put some other paint out, but I have no clue what I'm gonna paint. Um, let's do a landscape. Because that's probably easy to pull together. Um, I need a big brush, like a three quarter flat. And I don't have any, um, oh, I missed something. I have to go back. Let me go back because I don't want anyone to leave. And Okay. So on your leaves, little tiny touch of Doxine Purple. Just a little. Just here and there. Look how pretty that is. Kind of in those darker spaces. Okay. So just a little bit of that purple. And I used that actually on the pumpkin too. Um, I think just a little. But anyway. So there's that. Let's come back to this. And I'm just going to, um, I don't have any blues, so let's do some purple and some white. <laughs> I'm going to be a little crazy. We'll just use the blue that's in the background. So that's just purple and white. Oops. And then some greens. But my art journal is my place where I get to play and um, come up with ideas and designs and I can just, um, I don't know, there's, there's a different mentality to it when I go to my art journal versus sitting down to paint a project. Um, I think I'm a little bit more stiff and it has to be this way. And my journal allows me to play and create a little bit of brown in there, more so than any other place that I create. So I'll take that right down to there. Let's just take that right down. Like I said, have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just playing. <laughs> and get a little bit of that warm white in there. Let's come up with something. Ooh, grab some of that sour apple. Okay. So that's just like plantation pine and antique green with that textured background. Ugh, love it, love it, love it. If you've never worked in an art journal, I promise you, you're missing out. I know many of my members are here um, from my membership group, and we have a ton of fun creating and playing in our art journal. And I get to share a lot of things with them that I don't on, you know, these Sundays in the studio, um, and share more tips and tricks and techniques with them. 
So I'm just gonna put a little bit more white and then let's just pick up a little bit of that white and create what looks like maybe some clouds. And I'm just kind of tapping around on that brush. Maybe a little yellow in there. Right down to that blue. Okay. Then I do have to get, I think, put a little bit of that. Green and yellow make blue, right? So let's see what we get. <laughs> blue and yellow make green. Green and yellow make a very bright green. A little bit of warm white. Let's see what we get over that blue. There we go. Okay. Then, when I use all my paint on my palette, but I'm in it and I'm going to create. Then I'll just put a little bit more out. I need a different brush. So sit there and play and, you know, use up that paint. Base coat something. Don't let it go to waste. Paint up some trees. <laughs> oh, Molly Ann, thank you. I love, love, love having you in the membership group along with everyone else. We have a fantastic time. What is it Bob Ross says? Just put a little happy tree right over here. You can't be afraid to, to just try. Just try. Even if you're like, ugh, you know, not digging this landscape or whatever it is that you paint with your leftover paint on your palette. Um, we did a lesson with my group where we took our palette and put a uh, journal page right on top of our palette and then let it dry and then created the most amazing pages filling in the background. Um, so it is a, a mixture. My membership group is a mixture of decorative painting, mixed media, more of me, <laughs> if you can stomach more of me. Um, but I get to give a little bit, you know, more personal attention and um it's just a great community and it's been so nice to build these relationships and see relationships built in my group as well so okay so again don't want to spend too much time just kind of play around with it I love how misty and green that is back there. So I am going to take maybe a little bit of asphaltum, a little bit of green. Then I'm going to do some. And then I'll set a paper towel on it. Just kind of lighten it. Right, let's go back to some yellow. Well, hello. I got a lot of yellow to use. You guys still with me? <laughs> Janice, it is. If you go to my uh, website, um, you will see. Thank you, Carol. Love having you in there. 
We'll just do a little path. And you know, when I'm doing this, um, again, after painting and, you know, some things work, some things don't, but here I get to play and see what didn't work, um, what might work better. And many times things that I do in my journal will then become a pattern packet, you know, or a design that I teach at a convention or Now, I kind of want to do, <laughs> I kind of, kind of, sort of, I'm just going to do it. And you're like, what is she doing? And, and many times too, when, I, <laughs> when I'm doing this little exercise at home, I, um, I don't change my brush, which sometimes can get me in trouble because I'm like fighting with my brush. But then sometimes I just keep going and fight with the brush. Because I'm too lazy to stop and pick up another one to see what's what's gonna happen here. Does anyone else do this little exercise at home? Do you when you're done painting or do you just throw your palette away? Highly, highly, highly recommend giving it a try. Oh, too much white. And if I get quiet, we do have volume. <laughs> in my zone of playing, playing to see what's gonna happen. Cause you know, not all water is um, blue, right? Especially around a lake or something, you've got the Reflections from the trees and let me get that horizon line back in there. Okay, that water's looking a little scary. That um, that gesso underneath will pick up some of that as well and create some texture. But let's do little ripples. greenery over here <laughs> and boom there's a lake that isn't right sandy you make that looks <laughs> oh gosh i'm looking at it on the screen guys and going oh my gosh they're probably like oh what are we watching or if you're just joining going uh that's not a fall banner that i thought we were painting <laughs> But 
but but this is what I want you to see. Just pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, and and then just give it a go. You know, just try. You never will know if you can do it until you give it a try. Paint is very forgiving. And even though acrylics dry faster, you can still layer. Right? Kind of get it to where you want it. Um, let's do... I'm going to go to my fugly brush. This encaustic. Let's just get a little bit of... on there. And then where's that purple? Let's just do, maybe there's some little wildflowers. Maybe some of that tiger lily. A little orange, a little sunset gold, maybe a touch of white. We'll do a little meadow of flowers over here, and then maybe a little bit of color back here. Okay, <laughs> how's that for a, a what, a 15 minute um, <laughs> messy little landscape? Let's add some highlights on the trees and we're done. So a little green, a little yellow, a little warm white. If there's one thing I stress often, especially in my membership group and to my members, is to give yourself permission to play. I got the sweetest note from Karen Wilson, just adore you lady and and she was just like thank you for giving me the permission to play and you know it, it allow it makes everything better it really does creating in your art journal will make you a better painter um, even if if you like I wouldn't frame this I, I probably wouldn't paint this and give it to anybody um, not like this I'd want to sit there and fiddle with it for hours but um, giving yourself time to sit here and play and and see what happens just makes you a much better painter on everything else that you do. That's why I, I know I have some friends that are, I don't want to do mixed media. Mixed media makes you a better artist. And if, you know, stroke work and rose mulling and all those things are, that's your jam. That's what you like to do. That's great. But playing around with a little mixed media and giving yourself permission to play with other things and just try, um, you, you see like, oh, I could incorporate that into this. I could incorporate that into this. And it really does help you. In the long run, be better. And that's what we all want, right? I'm constantly learning and striving to educate myself to do things differently and better and Okay, so this one is a little more yellow, that's a little more white. I could sit there and fiddle and fuss, but I'm not. Let's just add one little more touch. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> How is that for quick 15 minute <laughs> landscape that I'd love to sit there and play and, you know, fiddle with? Um, and I might. So, let's see what else. I will take it. <laughs> Bonnie, it's yours after I fix it up. <laughs> um, Donna, that's a really good, good point. And I'm going to read it because she said, um, huh, let's see. Will you put this page back in your journal? Um, after I fix it. Um, I was just looking for that comment that I missed. Let me see. Um, uh, let's do that. Okay, so Donna wrote, I get stuck in my mindset that everything I put paint on must be for an ultimate end purpose. I need to keep the joy. And I have paint all over me. <laughs> Donna, get paint on your hands, get paint on your forehead, get paint on that brush and give yourself permission to play because it's what keeps the joy in my game. Um, many years ago, I was kind of at a crossroads of what I was gonna do and, and I, I really just started trying to dive into a bunch of different things. Um, I found that my joy for painting was lost and when I picked up my first art journal, oh my gosh, six years ago or more, um, it really was something that unleashed in me that, that I just love exploring. Um, there's no other way I can explain it other than it brings me so much joy. Um, and painting now brings me so much, you know, my joy is back. It, it, not that it was gone, but it, I, I just love being able to play. Um, and I just saw, I, <laughs> that's okay, Karen. Um, so just give it a go, give it a go and share it with me on this group. You can email it to me if you want to, if you're like, oh, I'm not going to share it, um, on my, on my page, then, um, <laughs> yeah. Hello. I got to get that off. I did, when I did the impasto, one of the paintings back there, when I did the impasto on the live few weeks ago, a month ago or so, and I had a big old blob of paint right there. Didn't even notice. So I was at a crossroads in the pandemic and I found Sandy. Chris, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So the two that we're going to do next week, let me just grab them and see my shirt, my jacket matches my, <laughs> my fall theme. Um, I'm not ready for summer to be over. Um, but as I look outside, it's all sunny. So next week we're gonna do, so this is the one we did today. Next week we will tackle these. Not gonna do the background. I'm not gonna do the border. Done, that's what we did today. So that you guys can see next week all the details because you know I love details. Um, all right guys, have a fantastic day. I'm gonna pop this up real quick just to give you a reminder. The surface is from the amazing Sheila Landry, and you can get that on her website, which is tollpaintingdesigns.com. The Papillon stamp, I love saying that, Papillon. Um, in fact, I had my husband pull it up on Google so that they could pronounce, pronounce it. <laughs> Give me the pronunciation. Um, and then that, the e-packet for this lesson and many more are also on my website. Information about my membership group is on my site. If you shop on my website, Use the discount code ART, all capitals. It will give you a discount. And on DecoArt, there's a one-time discount code I have. If you want to order, you can get 20% off your entire order and use that code. It's only good for one time, though. And what else am I missing? Oh, thank you, Janet. Thank you, Molly Ann. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Lucy. Okay, Lucy and uh, Moni, don't forget to message me and let me know what e-packet you'd like, and I'll get that off to you. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, um, a fantastic week, and tomorrow's a holiday here in the States. I will be 
butt in my seat because <laughs> I have deadlines. Um, and then next Sunday, I will be back. I know it's September 11th, um, but we will be back on September 11th, 3 p.m., same time, same bat channel, right here on my YouTube and on my Sandy McTear Designs Facebook page. So again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for being here. And um, I'm just looking to see if I have anything on there I need to share with you guys. Um, Darlene, so true, gives you a different touch and tools to paint. I have so enjoyed painting with Sandy, and I thank you. I thank you, Darlene. Okay, guys, um, I could just sit here and chit-chat with you all, all day, but I have things to do. So have a wonderful day. Get those brushes out. Get that paint out, preferably deco art and <laughs> dynasty brushes. But if not, whatever you have, whatever you have, get it out, be creative, and use it. All right? Talk to you.